All right, good evening. Uh, this is RSU 22's public forum in advance of the district budget meeting for 2021. And we will be discussing the school budget uh, in place for 2021-22, if it is the will of the voters. So to get started, I will be sharing a PowerPoint. And as you need to, please uh, stop and interrupt with questions. As I'm presenting the PowerPoint, I won't be able to see the chat uh, and would like someone just to be able to speak up if there is something that you'd like to share. So this year, of course, in our issue 22 has been a very unique year. Um, we did start with the hybrid model and have now moved into a place where the majority of our district is attending five days a week um, with a half day on Wednesday. Uh, during this year, we did learn a lot about what we need to do for uh, management of safety and certainly being responding um, to needs of the community as well as facilitation of federal grant money. So as we move through the presentation, uh, we can certainly stop and talk about those attributes, but it is our hope that next year is going to look much closer to normal and the budgeting for the year will be um, more of a traditional model with the influx of federal funds that still continue to come our way. So our budget process this year um, did include having administrators uh, look at their individual school buildings or programs to um, come to the central office with ideas for how they felt there should be priorities in the budget. We then took all of that input and began the six meeting uh, journey toward coming with the budget you'll see tonight. We started on February 10th with public meetings regarding the budget, and then we are here today at June 1st for the public forum. The district budget meeting is scheduled for this Thursday, June 3rd, starting at 7 p.m. It will be in the Hamden Academy Gymnasium in person. So we look forward to people coming out and uh, enjoying that process again after a hiatus last year. All of our budget committee meetings are open to the public and noticed, and we hope that you are able to uh, review those if you weren't able to uh, attend the video recordings um, as they occurred. Here's a list of our budget meetings and the articles or budget categories that were discussed at each. And then of course in May, May 5th to be exact, we did go over all of the articles again and make revisions as necessary. I'd like to talk about enrollment for a moment because there are several ingredients that go into uh, formulating a budget based on state subsidy. Enrollment is one of the primary factors this year, we did uh, see a decrease in our enrollment, as did most every school district in Maine. We were down 72 students for a total of 2,350 students attending our schools. This number, of course, is adjusted because we did have a number of families choose to homeschool beyond the typical. And we did have 14 superintendent agreements and 55 tuition students in our system. The breakdown of town by town enrollment is seen here, and you can see the decrease across each of our towns. We do feel that going forward, we will see a rebound of our enrollment, and it is a two-year rolling average of enrollment on our subsidy uh, figures. This shows um, a longevity graph, so you can see the movement over time of our enrollment numbers. We do see the dip here in 2022. We do expect to see that not only reach uh, levels of the previous year, but probably exceed them. There is a substantial uh, home sales in all of our towns, and we do recognize that uh, subdivisions and other uh, homes are being built uh, we do expect our numbers to increase. This is the census that was done back in uh, 2008, 
2018, and you can see that the 10-year projection is actually showing us to have declining enrollment. We have asked for a new census that is currently in the works right now that we'll be reassessing, um, considering the number of residences we are seeing being built. Uh, we do anticipate this graph to change. Enrollment by town is very much steady, and we do expect that this will likely continue. Um, we will continue to update um, as we do see any fluctuations. Revenue coming into our school district is very important as we are considered a high receiver for state subsidy. Our state allocation this year actually came in with an increase of $302,000, which was fortunate. Many districts in our state saw their state subsidy drop, and that was due to the heavy enrollment fluctuations. Um, we were one of the uh, lucky districts to have additional funding come to us. We will see a change this year um, where we will be doing an E-rate federal project for network improvements in multiple schools in the district. E-rate is a federal program that allows for uh, federal payback on communications type projects. And we do expect to see about $75,000 come back to us on that project in revenue. Um, our local earned revenue is expected to rise as well uh, to $145,000. Uh, that is related to the fact that we are cost sharing a social work position with Orono, and we will see um, return on that. We also have other factors in the budget that we'll review in just a few moments um, and show you where that increase is coming from. A very important attribute of our budget this year is the dedication of unallocated fund balance to offset taxation in our school district. Last year, we were at $550,000 toward our budget, which is a substantial dedication. But this year, we have pushed the limit a bit to $100,000 more at $650,000. And this is in part to offset taxation, but also to recognize that the fund balance going toward um, helping to get us on the path of having sustainable and competitive teacher salary is important to our SHU 22. We do have revenue change, of course, and you'll see here the $302,000 that has come in from state subsidy, the additional $100,000 for use of fund balance. We have the earned revenue for a net increase of $548,000 of revenue in our issue 22 this year. State subsidy continues to be uh, strong. We are a receiver of about 69% of our um, EPS formula is uh, sent by the state. We are very fortunate to be in a position where the state continues to fund solidly. And we now know that there is legislation in the works for the state meeting the full obligation of 55%. So we will look forward to that legislation hopefully passing as we move forward. And we will have a warrant article that uh, the district budget meeting will vote on to be able to accept the additional state subsidy um, cost shift if indeed it does pass. A budget summary. Our 2022 budget is coming in at $35,209,158.01. That is an increase over FY21 of 2.71%. It is an amount of $927,603 um, over last year's budget. And we're going to go through article by article so you can understand where that additional expense is dedicated. This sheet shows the revenue details as I referred to. You can see that for FY22, we are intending to have flat funding for gate receipts. Um, last year, of course, we did not get the revenue from gate receipts that we had anticipated due to COVID. We do feel that the athletic participation fees that also fell off this year will rebound. We will see the E-rate project. Um, you can see the additional uh, revenue there. IRS interest reimbursement will occur at a lower level simply because we aren't paying as much interest on our uh, debt service and leases. 
We also have expense reimbursement coming in from Newburgh, uh, VHS, uh, virtual high school courses, and fuel tax. We do have that budgeted at $15,000, which is less due to switches in how we're doing some of our um, cost shares. Uh, Newburgh School is slated to have a referendum related to the town potentially um, buying the school building. And then we have um, $38,000 here in revenue, which is from the shared social work position with Orono. And we also anticipate flat revenue this year through Main Care. Tuition students are on the rise for us. Um, we are fortunate to have about 55 to 60 tuition students in our system right now. We are budgeting here for 40 tuition students going into next year. Over time, we have had gross budget variances. This year, of course, we're at the 2.71, and you can see we're on a trajectory where we are having um, modified budget variances since the 2020, um, where we did ask for a significant local increase of 9%. Um, we now are down around the 2.71, and our local assessments are uh, much more conservative this year. The unallocated fund balance uh, continues to be a strong uh, commitment in our budget. And you'll see here that we do have the FY19 amounts from our audit. Our audit is still in the final completion phase as are many school districts in Maine due to COVID and our auditors um, needing extra time to get that complete. We will be uh, coming in with a need to expend about $2 million of our unallocated fund balance over the next three years. There is presently legislation before the um, legislator working to have 9% of our fund balance um, allowable rather than the conservative 3% that we now operate under. It would be very helpful to RSU 22 to tackle its deferred maintenance commitments if we could have that increase to 9%. This is a breakdown of our per pupil expended amounts. You can see um, RSU 22's dedications compared to the state average for each of the categories. Uh, we are able to run a robust system and not always spend at the state average. We constantly keep an eye though, because we know that sometimes the expenditures at the state average are important to be monitoring and to be keeping pace. So as much as we all enjoy um, a frugal approach to things and conservative nature, we also need to pay for and dedicate what our students need to have the best opportunities possible. I think RSU 22 continues to be competitive in that way. Here's a graphic of our per pupil breakdown. You can see that um, blue being RSU 22, orange being the state average. Um, we generally do keep pace. Uh, we are keeping an eye on that. And regular education, of course, we want to be sure that we are being very attentive to student needs, especially around um, social emotional growth and academic achievement, and also having competitive teacher pay. So we feel that we are on that path and making good headway. The individual articles, of course, have fluctuation each year. Um, I'm happy to say this year, uh, it seems to be about 50-50. So we have um, four articles that are showing increases this year, but we have worked very hard to find the places where we can have efficiencies in the budget or have cost shifts so that we're able to show um, some reductions in our expenditures. So as you can see, regular education certainly is an area where we increase the budget. We knew that we needed to uh, make those strong dedications to our students and our staff. Special education has that same effect. We want to be sure our programming and opportunities are robust and that we are competitive to retain and recruit our uh, teachers and staff. Article three is career and technical education. They now receive their own funding. 
Other instruction includes our athletics. This reduction is not a reduction to any programming for students. It's actually a cost shift to Article 1 for instructional team leaders who are the department heads of, of the past. And uh, that expense is better seated in Article 1 for regular education. Student and staff support is so critical at this era of education. Uh, we recognize that guidance, nursing, um, health services, making sure that social work is robust, that we have behavioral response for students, that interventions and assessments are um, well funded and that we're paying attention to student achievement that way. So you will see an increase here in Article 5. Article six is system administration, where you have board of directors and central office expenses. We are, were able to come in with a very slight reduction, uh, basically flat funding. Um, Article seven, uh, school administration, our principal's offices and the staff that work directly with principals to administer the programming at the schools. And once again, it's critical that we fund this uh, section of the budget well so that we are recruiting and retaining staff and also making sure principals have the resources they need to have robust programming in schools. Transportation, we were able to see a very slight reduction. Our, our contract uh, was bid for transportation this year, and we do have a five-year bid that came in with a flat fund. So we are very appreciative of that. Our maintenance article, we have found uh, several cost efficiencies in maintenance. However, I will say last year, we also saw a reduction in Article 9 facilities maintenance of a considerable amount. This year, again, at $30,000 reduction, um, we've probably reached the peak of how we can continue to manage these funds and not see uh, additions in the future, especially with increasing building and contract costs, not to mention fuel. And we will talk about a fuel stabilization reserve that we are proposing this year. Debt service continues to decrease. We have not brought on a new project since the building of our high school, and we continue to pay that down, and so we're reaping the uh, benefits of reduction there. This simply shows a graphic of what portion of the total budget each article represents. Uh, our most substantial article, of course, is regular education. That's where the majority of our students and staff live in the educational system. Special education is close behind with a robust and strong budget to support the programs. And then if we um, come on down, we see student and staff support is a, a significant portion of the budget as well. Um, it's very important that we pay attention to Article 5 in the coming year because it is a place where many um, services for students who may be struggling are uh, housed. Article 9, maintenance. Uh, we have a campus, of course, with uh, several buildings to upkeep. We are very fortunate that our buildings are in beautiful shape, and uh, we credit our facilities maintenance team for keeping them that way. But the resources are necessary in order to do it, and we do tackle deferred maintenance um, quite regularly and with a strong plan. Um, other increases, of course, are, I think, conservative, but respond to the needs that are before us. Um, these are quick article highlights. Um, this is all included in the uh, Link 22. The Link 22 newspaper came to all uh, mailboxes in the RSU. Uh, hopefully you received yours. And the segment right in the middle of that newspaper is the Link 22 budget insert. Um, all of the um, slides that you'll see forthcoming are included in this insert, and we'd recommend that you bring this with you to the district budget meeting on Thursday evening. So Article 1, um, we do see an increase of $433,619. Uh, these increases are primarily in salary lines. Um, we are looking to make sure that we are competitive with our salaries, as I've shared before. We also know that there are fluctuations in insurance, health insurance benefit packages that people 
uh, to select, so we have made adjustments there. We are excited to say that our Jobs for Maine graduate program at Hamden Academy continues, and it is now time for us to take on a slight grant share of $12,000 for the program. And we do also see that we've had places where we have found efficiencies. Um, we are going to be moving our literacy programming in part in the elementary school into a new model. And so we have seen some cost savings there due to retirements. And then we also see a reduction in ELL um, time that we need to pay for an ELL teacher simply due to the student needs that are uh, in our district. We also see a shift in gifted and talented because we do have um, an educational technician who has received teacher certification and we'll be moving into that role. Article two is special education. And once again, we do see an increase here of $455,226. That increase is primarily due to increase in salary lines. Um, we also see benefit shifts with health insurance. And then we have a slight increase to our psychological contracted services. And then we also have a switch. Um, we have had a contracted service provider who is now going to become an RSU 22 employee. So we do see an increase in the budget in making that transition. Article three is career and technical education. That program receives its own funding formula document. And so um, we simply have uh, zero recommended because the money goes straight to the CTE. We do carry CTE transportation costs for the approximately 50 high schoolers that do attend um, UTC in Bangor, and we carry that expense in Article 8, transportation. Article 4 is where we have our athletics, our co-curricular programming, our graduation costs, and um, other student opportunities. We do see a reduction not because we're reducing any student programming. Actually, we are making sure that we are increasing any opportunity we can, especially with some after-school offerings. But we have moved instructional team leader costs to Article One regular instruction, because that is what it primarily supports. Article five is the student and staff support article I spoke about earlier. This is where you see a number of um, increases for student support. We certainly have salary and benefit changes here. We also are being sure to make sure the um, instructional technology that we have brought on board through federal funds, um, close to a million dollars worth in this year alone, are going to be well managed and that staff can expect um, responsive times for anything that needs to be dealt with. So we're hiring a new instructional technology technician. We also recognize that we have instructional improvements and academic intervention responses that we need to be giving. And we've made sure that those are funded well in our budget. We also enjoy federal support through title grants for some of those interventions as well, but it is required that the RSU uh, pay in this local budget some of those expenses and not supplant it through federal funds. Article six is your board of directors and your central office um, expenses. We do have increases in salary lines and we have some benefit shift in central office. We do have some cost shifting also because of a move for the new superintendent position coming in and the assistant superintendent uh, shifting some of the duties, thus needing to shift where the funding comes from in these lines. And we did shift a portion of the assistant superintendent's salary to gifted and talented because uh, there is some level of oversight. I'd like to talk a bit about system administration costs. This is all often something people wish to discuss and understand. Um, what I'd like to share with you is this um, graph that demonstrates RSU 22 is 
uh, spending about $339 per student on system administration costs, about $626 per student on school administrative costs for a total of $965. You can see that uh, this is uh, definitely regionally competitive, if not competitive throughout the state. And we do keep an eye on these costs and try to mitigate uh, the expenses going to administration in RSU 22, especially system administration, as it is a bit removed from students. But we also want to recognize that both system and school administration are working to make sure our strategic plan, for instance, is a well-oiled machine toward uh, student achievement and student opportunity. And without that leadership, of course, you might not have that movement. So we do support that we continue to see um, the funding at levels that are necessary to have that effect. Article seven is school administration. And you do see we have a conservative increase here of $10,505. It is primarily due to salary increases, <coughs> excuse me, and benefit shifts. I will also say that we do have a couple of instances in this budget where administrative assistants do need to have some additional summer hours, and so those have been budgeted to help get the job done. Article 8, transportation. Uh, we were able to see uh, a very slight increase. It's basically flat funded. Um, that is mainly due in part to the fact that our transportation bidding process came in with Cirbus uh, being the sole bidder and coming in at the same price as we've paid the last two years. We are now in the five-year contract um, agreement. Article nine is facilities maintenance, and we're going to talk about a few things in this article. Um, we do see a savings here of $31,197. That was primarily um, achieved by looking for cost efficiencies in contracted services and repair and maintenance services. We did have increases in salary lines and benefit shifts for employees in this category. We did see increases in our contracts for plowing. Those were actually uh, significant. And then we also saw increases to our athletic care contract for the campus and athletic fields. We have looked at uh, the need for increase to insurance that we're paying on all of our buildings and grounds, and also recognize that um, fuel costs were going to go up. Um, we did see a decrease in electricity this year, especially with the three-year average, and we also had a decrease in the equipment that we're purchasing, mainly because we've been trying to get equipment along the way the last three years, and we're doing quite well on that rotation. What's important to understand here is that though we're seeing a decrease in our repair bond, um, because of interest reduction. We want to be sure that our facilities continue to be well addressed. Deferred maintenance that's allowed to go on too long will end up costing you more money in the end. So what we've done is look at how our contracted services and our repair and maintenance can be routine and that we are maintaining a strong effort in the local budget, but we also are going to turn to reserve funds. So I'm gonna talk about those just for a moment so you can understand where we're headed to support this reduction in Article 9. Outside of the budget, we have reserve funds, and RSU 22 has had a strong capital reserve fund for years. Uh, right now, we are at an amount uh, just about $274,000. Uh, this does include what was authorized last year at $200,000 to be moved into the capital reserve account. This is outside of the local budget. We also have an athletic field reserve account that's um, close to $82,000. Um, the reason it's so close to last year's amount is simply because we didn't have gate receipts from the athletic events to put into the athletic field reserve account. And that has been the primary funding source. So you will see warrant articles this year asking for another dedication to the capital reserve account because we have several important projects that need to be tackled and they're all pricey. 
Um, the timing to be doing projects is a challenging one right now, but we do have some things that need to be done, including Reedsburg School. We do have a facade structural issue with um, water and some shifting of the brick. And we also see that our turf retaining wall is in need of a substantial overhaul. Another project that we are putting forth is the central office. Um, it has not been renovated ever. And we are coming to a place where the deferred maintenance um, is in need of being addressed significantly to the tune of a renovation due to lack of compliance with ADA and also the, the need for the HVAC, especially our furnace uh, to be addressed along with um, structural and energy efficiencies. We also are going to be coming to the voters to make a dedication to our recently established technology reserve. We established this two years ago, and the intent was initially due to a software transition that we're going to be needing to make in the central office for um, accounting. And this has been put off due to um, COVID and also the uh, software requirement has not been initiated just yet. It's coming soon. But we also have purchased so much technology with the federal funds that have flowed into our SHU-22 for corona relief that we know in four to five, six years, we're going to have to refresh and we won't be having the federal funds uh, flowing in most likely ever again. So we want to be sure we're ready for that and have a dedication of $250,000 from our unallocated fund balance to this technology reserve. Then finally, we'd like to introduce a new reserve this year and establish a fuel cost stabilization reserve. We have recognized that there have been fluctuations in fuel prices. We're certainly experiencing that right now. We are recommending a transfer of $100,000 from our unallocated fund balance to set up this fuel cost stabilization reserve. Just so you know, this would assist us with fluctuations for propane that has been recently installed at multiple campuses in the past two to three years. We also buy all of the diesel fuel for our bus fleet. So when you're buying 58,000 gallons uh, a year, certainly there are um, price implications if there is a major swing. To move away from facilities and maintenance, Article 10 is our debt service article, and we do see a reduction here because we are paying down the debt on Hamden Academy, and we are seeing a savings uh, over last year. We continue to make uh, solid progress on our schedule. These are the debt service projections um, as we move toward FY27. I would like to share that uh, we were scored for the McGraw School at number 20 in the state uh, construction. And we want to continue to monitor where we are on the list and reapply if the money does not make it to number 20. I will say with high schools ahead of us in construction, the likelihood uh, the money will flow from that first scoring is um, low. But we are looking forward to continuing that plan and moving ahead. Therefore, we'd be seeing increased debt service um, over time if we did put forth a project and the voters approved it. Article 11 is where we seat school nutrition services. Our issue 22 is fortunate that our school nutrition program has performed uh, quite uh, strong. We are seeing that we are going to be able to move ahead next year. If things continue on the track they are, um, we will not be asking for any support and the lunch program will continue to be self-sustaining. So uh, many school districts dedicate anywhere from 30,000 up to $80,000 to their school lunch program. And our issue 22 has a cost efficiency for sure around that program. Article 17 um, will relate to adult education this year. Adult education will be flat funded this year at $75,080. 
Um, the program, of course, did get a setback with the pandemic, but we expect it to come on strong. We've already started some uh, classes and opportunities and they're being well attended. Now let's talk about local impacts from our budget proposal this year. As you may know, uh, valuation is another ingredient in uh, state budgeting for Maine that is quite significant. So there is a three-year three valuation that our towns um, have, and we can see over the span of the years what the impacts have been. And RSU 22 towns are all experiencing growth right now in valuation. So you can see here the increase uh, from the 2021 valuation to the 21-22, the percentage increase that each of the towns has individually experienced. And that calculation will be impactful as we move forward to determine local assessments. We have a cost sharing formula in RSU 22. It does take into account valuations and the number of pupils that attend from each town. Valuation is considered to be 80% of our cost sharing formula with pupils making up the other 20%. So when we enter each of the town's uh, valuation demographics along with the pupils, we get a, a cost share and you can see the comparison of the cost share going into 22 to last year. And in RSU 22, we're relatively stable with cost shares. Down here in table five, you'll see the total from taxes that is expected. The local EPS commitment from each town is required in order for us to pull down the full state subsidy. So there is no option if we'd like to pull down the 69% um, that we enjoy um, for this local EPS commitment. The local only debt service, of course, is the portion of Hamden Academy that the uh, town referendum passed in order to have things like larger science lab classrooms, the PAC Performing Arts Center, um, that local only debt service will need to be paid down. And then we have another local share. Almost all school districts in Maine cannot survive with a robust program on the state subsidy alone, the 55% VPS. So they do have other local shares. RSU 22 is no exception, and we pride ourselves in such a strong educational environment. Our towns support us well. And so this shows the other local share that will be uh, requested through the um, district budget meeting process for a total of $13,122 thousand six hundred and eight dollars this shows the change in each town from last year to this year in the assessment you can see that we have an overall local increase of 2.98 which uh, I feel is quite conservative for the product that we're able to offer to our four towns and for the programming that we're able to um, ensure going into next year's budget. The next few slides will just show a graphic of the assessments per town over a series of years. The local variances uh, that we have experienced over time, of course, do have fluctuations. This typically occurs when we have certain impacts in the budget that we need to meet, or we see that state subsidy is reduced, and therefore we need to ask uh, local communities to make up a different differential. Um, this year, I'm pleased to say that with the $302,000 that came in from the state subsidy side, uh, we were able to mitigate um, substantial costs and then mitigated it further by offering the additional $100,000 of unallocated fund balance for a total of $650,000 to offset taxation. 
So when we talk about um, the local contribution that's above the EPS formula, and I referenced that most all towns in Maine uh, certainly have to ask for above EPS support. Um, this is an alphabetical listing of not just regional schools, but statewide schools. And you can see the percentage at which they are having to ask their locals um, above the EPS support. We are here at a conservative 8% above EPS. And you can see that um, over the years, we have had um, increasing requests. And that often is just due to the fact that state subsidy shifts occur. And hopefully with uh, Governor Mills' interest in funding the full 55%, we may be able to see that this um, re gets reduced. But across the state, you'll see the um, difference in how school districts are able to um, request above EPS for support. Our per, per pupil costs are quite competitive in RSU 22. Um, you can see that the blue line certainly shows that we are keeping pace with the state for our per pupil costs. Um, we do receive tuition rate changes every year. Right now we're about um, $8,600 for a tuition student to come and attend RSU 22. Our per pupil costs uh, certainly will uh, fluctuate depending on the amount that we give over EPS and so we're at about a little over $12,000 right now where the state is um, almost at 15. The next steps in the approval for the budget are seen here when you go to the district budget meeting. Um, a list of all of the articles will be in the insert that you can get from the Lint 22 newspaper. We will follow this order and we will move through 25 articles, um, all of them uh, requiring uh, approval from our constituents in all four communities. We look forward to doing this at Hamden Academy starting at seven o'clock on Thursday evening. We are going to go back to our traditional district budget meeting format because as of May 24th, we are able to do so. There will be some guidelines related to COVID that I want to review. Masks will be required inside of Hamden Academy. This is simply due to the fact that schools continue to be under the expectation and requirement that masks are worn. So we are going to facilitate that, um, although it is a community meeting place. A minimum of three feet of physical distance is recommended between individuals. So as you stand in line to vote, or you are choosing your seats, um, we ask that you do observe the three feet distancing recommendation and that if you are going to be seated near a non-family member that you do allow for a seat in between. Anyone who does feel ill or has COVID-like symptoms, we ask not attend the district budget meeting as we want to be sure that we are as safe of an environment as possible. And we do want to encourage hand washing uh, at Hamden Academy. Please um, come into the building and feel free to um, go through that exercise if you would upon entering and exit. We will be having masks available for folks who might forget theirs and we'll also be having plenty of hand sanitizer out so that uh, people can take care of their safety needs. So at this time, I'd like to thank you for attending and I'm certainly open for any questions. I'm going to stop presenting now so I can see the attendees and take any questions you may have related to our budget. Any questions? Okay, hearing none, um, we will convene uh, Thursday evening, 7 p.m. Hamden Academy Gymnasium. We appreciate all who could come out to uh, hear more about our budget and uh, help us to know if the towns are behind us in this. And we certainly want to support our students and staff, especially as we move forward to have a near to normal year. 
We really look forward to that. So thank you to all and have a wonderful evening.